and welcome back to Live Laugh Stuck. I am Jackie, aka Jax. It's Moose Stuck, so you know who's here. That'd be wild if one day I just have an episode without Moosey. Hi, Moosey. Hi. How's it going? It's going all right. My uh, my Tumblr account got nuked. What? My Tumblr account got terminated, and I don't know why. And I've now sent two emails to support. One from the email I had for that account, which didn't get an automated response. And one from an email account that's not for any, that's not associated with any account. And that one has gotten an automated response. So thank you to someone in a Discord server who suggested I don't use an email that is associated with the account that got terminated. Because even though they tell you to. So anyway, I, I'm hoping it's resolved by the time you guys hear this. But this just happened Monday. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so my Live, Love, Live Laugh Stuck Tumblr account I had 19 side blogs, Moosey. Mm -hmm. I had 19 side blogs, including, you know, Live Laugh Stuck Jacks, the Axe, Fake Gamer Bro, posting Homestuck polls, my fucking webcomics one. I was hoping since I had mods on that one, but that got taken down. So I've had to send out some posts with a bunch of tags trying to get people to, to recognize it and find my mods. Have you read this webcomic poll blog? Because that blog had almost as many followers as I had on my main blog. Like, it was getting up there. Mm -hmm. So that's tragic. That's what I'm up to. Um, I guess I was primed to talk about it, even though <laughs> <laughs> even instead of the episode. Is there any but, sort of, um, like, terms of service you think that they might have, like, mistakenly flagged or something? I have no idea. Because a while ago, my main Tumblr was flagged to where... Like, just that that blog, not any of my side blogs, but just that blog wasn't showing up in any searches. And I didn't realize it was happening for a while. And then when it did, I just never, I just didn't think to message support. And I finally did. And that blog got marked as mature, which it's not. Like, I have side blogs that have more mature content and stuff on it. And they got to unflag. So my stuff started appearing in searches again. And then um, now I got my account deactivated. Mm. So I don't know what's up. But yeah, that's what I'm up to. What are you, what, what, what's going on with you? Just finishing up the semester. We had our last week of classes, and now it's almost finals week. It feels really early for that, but I guess it's been a while since I've been in college. Yeah, our semesters always end around, like, early May, I guess, and also, like, early to mid-December. But I'm just looking forward to having a break. Yeah, no, I imagine. It'll be nice. I have a vacation coming up at the end of... May. Mm -hmm. I have a week off. Nice. By the way, I'm sure it's going to be so late by the time this comes out because I release every two weeks and I still have a couple uh, blah, 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 ship to your episodes to get through. So this is going to be past by the time. But we have now, as of recording, finished planning the live Q&A on Carcat Day. So I hope that went well. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys mm -hmm. watch it if you want to be able to be there. I hope nobody asks me questions because I'm not going to know anything. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't think they're going to quiz you. It's not like... <laughs> it's like, so, um, how many suits did Dave make in Acts 1 through 4? Um, <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, they might just ask you, like, I don't know, other shit. Yeah, Car Cat Day. Very excited. We're all going to be in one place. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're on Act 6, Intermission 5, where... It starts to get weird with the sub intermissions. Yeah, I think maybe <laughs> maybe Hussey was getting burnt out at this point. I don't know. I see this this area doesn't uh, this section never doesn't feel like a burnt out. This feels like a ramping up for me. Uh -huh. I think he was just playing with the concept of what an intermission is. Is my opinion on like why it starts to get weird, like why intermissions have been slowly getting weirder and weirder as we go on. Because mm -hmm. intermissions are supposed to be like the shit that doesn't really matter. Like first we were seeing like the troll stuff, like we had the plot stuff going on with the alpha kids. And then we had the meteor where it's like, OK, they're just fucking around. They're not doing anything. It's like they're drawing dicks in a book. Right. Mm -hmm. And then slowly the relevance of what's happening in the intermission has started increasing. And yeah, so I think that's what, like, this sub-intermission is doing, is he's like, you thought intermissions were useless and weird and I'm not doing them right before, just wait till now. <laughs> this is supposed to be the time I go to use the bathroom, is during the intermission. Right, right. I assume that I'm going to hear more about it when I get to, to this point in Homestuck Made This World. I've been keeping up, like, 
one episode behind where we currently are, so I don't say, oh yeah, so that stuff we talked about last time, I actually have some new ideas about it. Mm-hmm. So, just try to keep those separate. But I highly recommend, if anyone listening has not listened to Homestuck Made This World, go listen to it. It is so good. I feel like I'm going to have to listen to it again to really absorb it all. Kind of like you have to read through Homestuck more than once to like <laughs> absorb everything or watch Arrested Development more than once. Mm. It's really good and it's given me more things to think about and it's a lot of fun, but we're not talking about that. <laughs> we are finally going to talk about Act 6 Intermission 5. Yep. Sub-intermissions 1 through 6. 1 through 6. I think I lost count of them somewhere along the way. Mm. Yeah, Intermission 6. Uh, or intermission five and intermission six is what we got down to. Yeah. But some of the some of it got confusing. We'll start off with Carcat is trying to get a hold of Dave on his speaker crab, which like this a section is called I Have You on Speaker Crab. Yeah. Which immediately pays off. Because they are the meteor is finally nearing the Alpha Kid Skya. Carcat's like, how do we stop this? Mm-hmm. Like this is still going at the same speed, and are we just gonna crash into it? Like what's happening? Terezi is troll wasted on Fago. Dave mentions that Rose is also in need of an intervention, which Carcat doesn't understand because it's not like she's drinking Fago or anything. Mm-hmm. And it is like we find out that Dave has sometime in the past dumped Terezi because. Either he's not into polyamory at all, or it's specifically clown-oriented polyamory. <laughs> I, too, am not into clown polyamory. No clowns. Uh, Moosey says uh, clown fuckers, <laughs> they are not one of them. No. <laughs> I've, I've dated someone who was very into clown polyamory, but I am I also agree. It's not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's funny that they make fun of how fake Gamzee's religion is whenever Gamzee's religion is like explicitly real. Because like Calibor and Lord English is their messiah. <laughs> like, <laughs> mm. and I also noted that that uh, Carcat gets kind of existential about like what's going to happen whenever mm. Dave meets back up with John and Jade. And it's like, okay, well, I guess like you won't need me then so maybe we won't stay friends and dave's like fuck off we're still gonna be friends you absolute asshole Mm -hmm. yeah but teresa got her sight back yeah she was hiding it for a while yeah sorry i'm just staring at the you you screenshot of the picture of her just like passed (laughs) out in a pile of fago in her boxers with cuddling a uh pyro sprite Mm -hmm. that's how it goes i mean i think if you drink that much sugar water anyway you would pass out like that right it's just like explicitly I, I not explicitly it's implied that that she's getting like drunk or high or something from it because you know dave compares it to rose and car cat doesn't get like what like i don't understand what she's drinking it doesn't seem like it should be bad uh it's not like you know what terezi's dealing with which is like a, a legitimate addiction or whatever <laughs> it does make you wonder if if it's fago specifically if it's sugar if it's uh, corn syrup. <laughs> yeah. The trolls get drunk off of high fructose corn syrup. God, I mean, it's just like uh, there was this whole season of Supernatural where like the the big bads were putting shit in corn syrup that turned people into like mindless, you know, they just only <laughs> cared about like hanging around and, and eating more food to be like, you know, like literally turning them into farm animals so they could eat them. Though, this raises the question for me if Alternia, uh, their corn production is subsidized by the state in order to create more high fructose corn syrup. Oh my god. <laughs> what is agriculture on Alternia? Yeah. We've never seen, like, a vegetable there, right? Like, it's all bugs. Mm. I mean, I guess you haven't seen a lot of the food, but, like, in high, uh, high salt friends. Then. High fructose bug syrup. Yeah, they just squeeze some bugs. It's gross. That's what I want to know. At the end of Homestuck, I want to know what the agriculture is like. Yeah. I mean, like, you can try to extrapolate from when we read through Frensim. Oh, is there foods in Frensim? There's some, yeah. I mean, because it's, like, definitely showing you more of Alternia. I mean, a lot of people criticize it of how it's, like, you know, it goes against some of canon Alternia or, like, it's taking some things too literally and just, I don't know. 
Like, there's criticism of it, but it does have, like, more food and stuff in it. Okay. I will remember to, or I'll try to remember to analyze <laughs> the foodstuffs. Yeah. Fucking alternian agricultural and government subsidies world building. Mm -hmm. I mean, because, like, they don't, I mean, they do have, some of them have jobs to get money, but, like, these kids don't have jobs, but they are still able to, like, buy food and stuff. Well, do they even I mean, I operate guess... under alternian capitalism is the question. <laughs> Well, like, but high bloods get fancier stuff, but are they just allowed to go into places because they're high bloods and, like, what you're able to get is based on, like, your blood cast and not how much money you have? Possibly. <laughs> it's like tiered communism, so there's, like, still the better people above the lower people. Yeah, but, like, in Frensim, we definitely see people have jobs, and I think in Hive Swap too, you have to pay for something i don't know maybe i'm <laughs> wrong maybe we'll have to get into that mm -hmm. so we get our first sub intermission we're act six intermission five intermission one uh and we're seeing how caliborn's doing in in his quest yeah he's just going around to the planets and conquering them yeah conquering them and he's getting the members of the felt mm -hmm. Uh, which he is currently calling leprechauns and uh he's getting into arguments with Hussey, the narrator, uh, about how useful the leprechauns are. Should I go back and read the first intermission? No. no? Okay. I mean, if you want to, I'm not going to stop you. I'm sure, like, when I said no, there's some uh, intermission, there's some, some felt fans out there who's very upset and says, of course, go back and read it. <laughs> but I mean, why do you think you should go back and read it? Just because it didn't make any sense to me the first time I was reading it. And I was like, who are these jokers? I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it will probably make more sense the next time you read it. Mm -hmm. Does it matter? No. <laughs> I mean, like, there's there's definitely some things that you go back and read it and you'll understand more. But that's like all of Homestuck. Right? Yeah. But uh, it's not like you need to, like, know what the felt powers are. Right. Uh, OK. Like, <laughs> I don't need to you catalog can just reference that. that if you want. No, I mean, like, again, the Felt fans are probably screaming at me, but there, it's fine. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, I probably will not then <laughs> until I end up yeah. rereading it anyway, the entire thing or s speed watching it or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe by the time we're done, let's read Homestuck, whatever it's called, we'll be done. Back to the normal intermission. We see the gold boat on Jake's planet. We go in and John's fucking tuckered out. He's so sleepy. Dave Sprite tries to wake him up and he can't. So he monologues at him about how worthless of a entity he is whenever real Dave's here now and how he was terrible to Jade and how Jade deserves a real Dave instead of a instead of a bird boy. <laughs> and then my favorite. I sure do talk to myself a lot, don't I? Wow. Why have I never made this observation? Yeah. Yeah, you do, bud. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> I gotta say, if you uh have read Homestuck and just want more Dave Sprite thoughts, you should read uh uh Crow Strider AU. It's on Tumblr and it's on um MSPFA and it's very good. I haven't finished it because I thought it was done or almost done or something, and now I think there's an epilogue or I don't know. I gotta finish reading it. It's very good. It's very good. Dave Sprite watermarks like the sky or whatever and the watermarks are like both like canon images we've seen of him mm. and fan art and cosplay oh okay i was wondering if that was like photoshopped pictures of like <laughs> they kind of look like j-pop stars or something from the, the <laughs> picture yeah i don't know it could be but i think they were actually i think they were actually cosplay mm. i just wish like whenever hussy did stuff like that it was like, I don't know, maybe it's in the newsletter and I just didn't read, uh, you know, the, the news posting below it and I just didn't read those. But I wish there was something like on screen or at the end of the chat log or something that that said where he got that stuff from, like said when there were other people helping out. Like, obviously, we know, like the music and stuff and we we have all that. But like other people helped out with the games. Uh, the person doing Calliope's art is a fan artist. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I would just like more acknowledgement of where uh, Hussey got stuff. Mm. That was a very short continuation of the intermission because we're back to sub intermission two, where 
Caliborn has more leprechauns and they're called gnomes now. Mm -hmm. And at first they thought the time stream was like a big intestine or something coming out of him. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's his uh his past timeline. Oh, and then you you mentioned that Robo Bunny is back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Little Seb's there. Um, I, I did <laughs> send you fan art because uh someone happened to be reblogging a bunch of like really old art, like when this update was coming out. Just, you know, at the same time I was I was scrolling through and there was some ship art of uh little Seb. So that was fun. <laughs> yeah, and each of the intermissions are going back to Caliborn, but then it like hops between other things too. Yeah. Uh but but notably not the Alpha Kid session. I don't think we ever get to the Alpha Kid session. Well, towards the end we do. But like so far, because like the intermissions have been not the Alpha Kid session, it's been other stuff. Mm -hmm. We're we're done checking in on see seeing how Caliborn's doing. And uh John is is in Dream Bubbles. Mm -hmm. Uh we see the cracks forming in a circle on the we don't see it on the map, but like uh, you know, it's on the map. Yeah, around and what is this like the green sun or something? Oh, I think so. I don't have the the picture in front of me. Yeah. And there is a pirate ship with Mina, Arania, Vriska, Tavros, uh, and then we see Aradia and Solux. I really need to change my pronunciation of Arania and Aradia. <laughs> yeah, Arania. I have a hard time keeping them straight, kind of because of those names. Aranea, yeah. Aranea. I don't know, but yeah, uh, Aradia and Solux are there, and Vriska and Ar uh. Aradia are mind controlling a bunch of Doom timeline ghosts for the army, and uh, it's noted that like Vriska is corrupting Arania to being okay with, <laughs> you know, a more scrupulous endeavors. Yeah, this is where John's actually like, I don't know, I guess maturing maybe and being like, wait a minute, this is wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's different when some girl is telling you like like chatting, being like. Hey, I did some fucked up stuff and I'm feeling weird about it. Like, maybe I regret it, but that's weird that I would regret it, right? And John's like, I don't know. Like, maybe it's it's normal that you feel fucked up about doing bad things. But I'm not in troll society, but I think it's good that you feel bad about doing bad things. Mm -hmm. And then now in front of him is like, oh, yeah, no, this is the 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 best thing to do is mind control a bunch of ghosts. It's fine. I don't understand why you're upset. And then have them double die. Yeah. But yeah, not only like mind control them to their deaths uh, in order to find the ultimate weapon. Do ghosts have souls? <laughs> right. I don't know. Thinking about like, is there like another afterlife you go to? It's just a recursive afterlife. Yeah, that's what Inception's about. Is it? <laughs> no. It's, it's it's like, I, don't, I don't remember that being about afterlife. No, it's it's not, but it's it's like you have to like one Go of the ways to get out of the dream, the, the level of the dream is is to die in order to get out of that level of the dream. You know, you might still think you're in a dream and then die to get out of it. But no, it's like I don't know, opposite inception. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's fine. And, and yeah, so uh, Mina mentions that she's jealous that Arania and Vriska have such a good relationship because she doesn't get to have a good relationship with Feferi because she has like this internal urge to to murder Feferi as another heiress, mm -hmm. which I don't understand because Beforen is explicitly not supposed to have that. Like the violent urges were something that Doc Scratch put into Alternia, uh like Alternian trolls in order for them to, you know, create strong enough players to win the game, to to, you know, everything to bring Lord English into uh into the world. Yeah into the universe so it i it doesn't make sense that mina has this violent urge toward the fairy you know i think that's just being a teenager well like <laughs> she just makes it seem like it's a biological thing that she wants to be friends with a fairy but like biologically she has this urge to be the only heiress but mm -hmm. i don't know maybe i'm reading too much into it and it is just mina being mina yeah, I don't know. I was just being facetious <laughs> we get we get a, a, a lore dump about cherubs yep all, yeah. all about the mating process. Um, I do. I don't know. I love it that like, because obviously fans were wanting to know more about cherubs, and um, there is some like, you know, relevant information in that lore dump. But Hussey's like, look, it's this obnoxious person doing a lore dump, and no one wants to listen <laughs> to it. 
I don't know. It's appeasing both the people who want a lore dump and the people who don't in a way. Mm-hmm. What is funny in the lore dump is uh, you see a, so like they're talking about how like, um, you know, there's the good cherub and the bad cherub and the, they have to meet up to, to bone like, two good cherubs don't meet up to bone that's just crazy Mm. which you know is that queerness and cherub culture would be to like go to the same sort of alignment that you are i guess so to bone you know you just have to look at a new culture and say but what's queer in this (laughs) culture so we're talking about the bad cherub and like showing like his reign of destruction and one of it is a like showing these two trolls looking up at the sky in one panel and then in the next panel they get eviscerated those two trolls are fan trolls from a kickstarter tier uh that if you paid i don't know how much money it was but it was a a good chunk of change you would get your fan troll in homestuck Mm -hmm. and uh, that's what they got those are the fan trolls cool (laughs) i will also put people's trolls in my game if you want to give me money yeah i don't know <laughs> uh they have know. to be you got, a, you got a kofi got a patreon they have to be <laughs> legally distinct trolls though i don't want to get sued that would be so funny <laughs> uh, but the the important part of that is that they are in their very powerful snake forms whenever they bone mm-hmm. and in that form they can only be hurt by other cherubs and it's it's said that like you know that is a sort of power that Caliborn got whenever he made the deal with his denizen that powered him up to Lord English. Okay. Then we get a meta commentary about inner I- inner fissions. Mm-hmm. I was like, haha, there's going to be an intermission between this tale. I am telling you, I forget what they fucking said about inner fissions, but it's like. It's so dumb. <laughs> but there's the pun interficients that we get out of it. Mm-hmm. So we just like watch a, a timer go down as Mina takes a piss. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's elevator stuck flash where everyone has little instruments. So it's very cute. Mm-hmm. I love that you zoomed in on the just like the, the wonky pixel face that John made. Yeah. John gets a lot of like good faces <laughs> in this section. He has a lot of great expressions in this this chunk of homestuck i love it mm-hmm. i always appreciate a good wonky face it's a good wonky face it's very good for how many pixels are in that picture so real quick with caliborn getting the power like you said does that mean the deal was to get the power without having to mate is like he just bypasses that part yeah so i should have taken more notes on this <laughs> but but yeah so he he because caliborn's whole thing is He gets to skip all the things that he's supposed to do in order to get like, you know, he's supposed to win an internal struggle with his other half in order to predominate. And it's supposed to be a maturing process. But instead, he gets someone to murder her dream self and she goes to sleep and doesn't wake up. And so that's how he predominates instead of the normal way. And he's supposed to mature into a full grown cherub and like gain a lot of power that way and then only access that like huge amount of power whenever it's time to bone and instead he gets that because he makes a deal with his denizen and then beats him so either way he would have been really destructive yeah uh it's just the really destructive time would have been limited to (laughs) the mating time instance yeah and there was like you know there would be another cherub right there Mm -hmm. to be trying to curb that but uh, i mean they wouldn't curb it would probably be like ultra destruction because it's the two of them fight boating gross <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i guess it doesn't explicitly say that it's the same power as whenever he's in the mating thing but like that that's what it feel like implied to me because like you know because she talks about their mating process of like and then they have this um, unlimited supply of power and they can only be harmed by other cherubs and you know they have to uh you know one will eventually like dominate over the other mm-hmm. and and yeah so now um you know lord english has a uh similar thing yeah <laughs> oh and this is also where we figure out that it's been pool this whole time uh caliborn's challenge is just pool is wait what it's just pool oh like his challenge okay sink the black eight ball last thing yeah but like because all the other planets he's sinking like he's just yeah. hitting them <laughs> you know he's blowing them up 
um, on certain sides to get them into the the black hole. Mm-hmm. And he's getting all the felt, which are color coded based on pool balls. We also find out that John has a ring that can bring people back from the dead. Yeah. And he doesn't know what to do with it <laughs> now that he's a little, uh, like, icked out by Vriska. And Vriska isn't too happy about it. <laughs> Vriska is pretty upset by John's change of, change of tune about her. Yeah, I mean, looking back on any crushes I had, you know, that were a couple or three years old, I probably would have been like, ew, gross, I can't believe I had a crush. <laughs> yeah, I guess. We go back to the meteor, and it's more of the intervention with Terezi. Carcat is sitting in a backwards chair yeah. to be cool and, and open and stuff. The youth pastor sit. <laughs> the youth pastor sit. That's, that's so funny, considering his uh, ancestor is like considered to be Troll Jesus. I personally think Troll Moses makes more sense, but... I mean, I guess both, kind of Moses and Jesus. I don't know. <laughs> he does get get killed for for preaching about peace, but he's also about like liberation of his people. So, mm-hmm. you know, you got the quote from Dave. This is like some ex alien boyfriend prime directive shit. I can't inter- intervene because I don't know what I'm talking about, but you do. So I guess keep going. <laughs> Just about how unhealthy the relationship with Gamzee and stuff is. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is where you find out Teresi has her side back. I thought maybe I just didn't mention it before, but we find it out now. Yeah. And, you know, she's real fucked up about her choice to kill Vriska, which you know, I guess if you, like, killed one of your friends, even if it was a complicated friendship, I can see being fucked up about that, especially if you have nothing but time on your hands for three years. True. Yeah. I really like this quote from Carcat. It's a bit long, but I'm going to read it in full because I like it. That's the cruel thing about Paradox Space. It systematically validates all your mistakes as necessary outcomes. Not even necessary for your own good or personal growth, it's always bigger than you. Like, your errors in judgment are inseparable from the way reality has to unfold. So it never lets you forget about them, because they were all critical to the big picture, and all your past flaws are like... scars. Scars in space-time that never heal, and always serve to remind you that the perfect version of yourself you wish you could be can never exist. Because the survival of everyone you care about depends on him not existing. Uh, and I don't know. I like it. Deep, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because, yeah, because uh, Teresi, because we see the offshoot timeline where she doesn't kill Vriska. And it is a doomed timeline because because Vriska goes and gets everyone else killed. Was that because she, like, led um, what's his face to them? Yeah, she led uh, Beck Noir back to them yeah. because he could pick up her scent from where she came from. I feel like we haven't really thought about Beck Noir in a long time. I know that the space chase is still happening, but yeah, just yeah, he showed up a bit before. He was like a, a footnote at this point. Yeah, but everyone's starting to reach the destination, so almost time for the big battle, and then the end, like five pages later, and then the end. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, what, I think we're still, what year is this that we are in right now? When it was published? This is like... Yeah. Uh, November 2012 to April 2013. Yeah, Homesick ends in 2016. <laughs> so, just keep that in mind, that uh, Homesick ends in 2016. And we do have a Gigapods coming, which definitely contributes. Mm-hmm. Intermission 5, Intermission 3. They're elves now. Mm-hmm. Back to uh, normal intermission five. You brought up how John is concerned about how uh, about the Doom timeline's ghost deaths. Yeah. So, so the problem with this section is I think I was doing a lot of like posting on Tumblr, thinking that you know if I really want to, I can just go back and find those posts, and I can't. <laughs> so I think I just had a lot of notes on here because because uh, yeah, John is concerned about the Doom timeline ghost death. And he kind of, like, hangs back as they're walking to ask uh, uh, a radio what she thinks about the whole thing. And, yeah, a radio just wants to see what happens when this whole place breaks apart. Which is just, that is the peak a radio moment. Any a radio lovers, like, that is, like, the moment for a radio. Mm. Um, well, that and make her pay. Make her pay is a big a radio moment. But, um... Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so we have the Rings of Life and Void. And... Get uh, Tavros, Solix, and Nepeta, 
and Feferi, uh, fuck off. Mm -hmm. Solix with Nepeta and Feferi. I don't know. I'm so, I'm very frustrated because like, okay, so we had Fafetta, right? And uh, Fafetta just existed. In my mind, Fafetta existed because people were like, I like Nepeta and Feferi. I wish they were still here. I can't believe they got killed off. They had so much potential, blah, 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 blah. And Hussey had nothing more to say about these characters, mm -hmm. but uh, he was bringing back characters in this fucked up Gamsey way. And so he brought them back both in one place and she is nothing but an object, right? Like she is like, like literal. Yeah, just objectification. Objectification. I was trying to think of if lampshade was the term for this mm, or uh, replace sexy lamp. Sexy lamp is the. You know, you can replace them with a sexy lamp oh. is a thing where it's like when a character, uh, usually a female character serves no purpose, like to the plot of the story, but they just are there to look hot. Mm -hmm. And in this case, like the not there to look hot. She's just there to like be talked at. Like, I know Roxy says, I forget if this happened before or if it happens later, but I just read like meta about this where Roxy says that like the is one of the reasons that she sobered up in the first place. But we never see Fafetta talk on screen. If she talks, it is not on screen. She is there to be cute and like, look, it's the two characters you want. It's a catfish. And she is there to be talked at by Aerosol Sprite, mm -hmm. who is talking not even to, to the whole person, but just to Fafari, really. And oh, wait, no. Does Arqueus come in at that point? I don't remember. <laughs> but I remember us talking yeah, about this before. Sorry. With the it was Aerosol and Arqueus. Yeah. Aerosol and Arqueus talking to Fafetta, and they're both trying to talk to different parts of Fafetta, and that makes them explode. Yeah. And now we have Nepeta and Fafari again, and these are the OG Nepeta and Fafari. This is these are the uh the ones who are combined into the sprite, and they still don't talk. They get to be arm candy for Solux that he, <laughs> as he blasts off. Yay. They just like they're not allowed to have characterization at this point in time in the comic. Mm. And it's very I don't know. It's like I don't want to shit on anyone's favorite character or like they're not allowed to have those characters as like characters they really love. It's just like they're it's just not like a character. Like to me, it was like kind of a middle finger to the people who wanted Fairy and Nepeta back because she's just there to be a dear, sweet, precious Fafetta and not like a character. Mm. Anyway, so they still remain that as Solix blasts off with them, even though it's extremely funny. <laughs> yeah, they all, I don't know if I remember the reason, but they all like leave uh, Vriska's quest. Yeah, Solix isn't a huge fan of what they're doing. He gets into an argument with Vriska about how they're still real people, even if they're not like the alpha timeline. It's so fucked up that it's called the alpha timeline and we also have the alpha kids. I think that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's not like the alpha timeline. They're not from the alpha timeline. So Vriska thinks of them as lesser. And Vriska catches him like calling them like the, you know, referring to like their friends from the alpha timeline as like the real versions of them. She's like, see, you also don't think of them as real people. And and yeah, so he gets into argument with Vriska about that and then gets fucking tired of it and heads out. Tavros is also tired of everything, partially tired because he's still jealous of John. <laughs> But yeah, he's tired of being treated like shit by Vriska, which yeah, finally, <laughs> I guess they've all grown suddenly within the last three years. <laughs> but today's the day. Uh, well, I don't know. To be fair, for the ghosts, it's been more than three yeah. years. Like for for the ghosts, it's it. Uh, they're not sure how long it's been. It could have been millennia that they have been doing this. Um. Because time just works differently in dream bubbles. Mm -hmm. And Rose is building a can tower with the mayor and is super drunk. Oh, yeah. You said that you wish the, the older versions of the kids and trolls had slightly different appearances. That'd be fucking nice, wouldn't it? Just a. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> it's just already hard enough to tell everybody apart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that'd be that'd be a neat thing. but. One of my favorite Rosemary things in existence is Rose drunkenly asking if Kanaya is going to break up with her. And Kanaya, in the most frustrated look, just screams, no! And it's like, <laughs> they're so real. They're such a great couple. Like, Rose is fucking up so bad right now. And 
like Kanaya is just had it up to here with it, but is also like not there to coddle Rose's self doubt and and shit. And it's like I am actively trying to help you with this. You are being very unhelpful in this regard, and I do not have time for you to like question like this relationship shit. That is not the point of this. And I don't know. It's very fun. I I guess very fun is a weird thing to say, but I like it a lot. We should play with cans. When yeah, we <laughs> just get a bunch of cans. <laughs> intermission five, intermission four. They are called frogs now. Yeah, more guys. I just, I just, guys. I just update the lingo. They're frogs now. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you said that Gamsey is coming to the treasure cave. It's Curlos that goes and grabs Riska's jacket, I think is oh. what you're referring to. Yeah, I can't tell anyone apart. That's fair, especially because we don't see Curlos that often. Like we saw him like once mm-hmm. or twice. But um, yeah, that's Gamsey's uh, dance sister who comes in and grabs Friska's jacket for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Mina talks to John about having this crisis of like, I don't want to steal that ring from you. And John's like, OK, that's good. <laughs> no, no, you don't understand. I'm going to steal it one day. I'm going to steal it because that's what I do. I steal valuable things. John's like, you literally don't have to, but I don't want to steal it. But I'm gonna, (laughs) I'm gonna steal it from you one day. And I feel bad that I'm going to steal it because I want to hang around with my friends. John's like, well, it's cool. You just don't have to steal it then. But I'm gonna. (laughs) I I love Mina so much. Riska opens the chest and like has this confused look on her face. And then it immediately cuts away. Uh, because we, of course, we can't get that reveal, and it goes to Viceroy Bubbles von Salamancer, also known as Casey, mm. who is, uh, you know, naming a bunch of skeletons, I think. And Friska becomes aware of the narrative to force it to go back to her because she's not waiting <laughs> to reveal what fucking uh, is in the is in the box. So she fucking dumps it on the ground and has this little fit. That no one else knows what's going on. And I love the screenshot you have because John has the funny mm-hmm. face again while Aradia is just smiling. Yeah. <laughs> I love her so much. Yes. Have the world burn. <laughs> She's so great. She's just like, it's not like she wants the world to burn, but she wants to be there and see it burn. Mm-hmm. She is the spectator. It's so great. Yeah, so in the box is a homestuck. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the Esperb logo. And Frisk is like, it's intangible, you can't touch it. And John's like, I'm gonna stick my hand in it. And Frisk is like, maybe don't though. And uh John does it. <laughs> it's like if Friska is saying maybe don't do something that maybe something's too dangerous to do, maybe you shouldn't do it. Like if Friska's telling you not to. If Friska mm. is is the, the cautious person something's wrong Mm -hmm. but yeah he uh reaches in and his hand goes through and you see it appear several times in this panel and uh uh, poking briska's horn and then you see it appear throughout homestuck you see a bunch of panels like an old homestuck panels and if you go back to those panels john's arms in there now (laughs) it's uh it's one of the reasons why the that official Homestuck archive or collection is really, really important because you can, you know, you can set it that you're reading it for the first time. So you don't see all those changed panels and be like, why the fuck is there an arm here? <laughs> I might have just thought it was like a worm, like a secret worm in every panel. Yeah, no, for sure. It's it's so funny, though. Like, it, it was you know, crazy to be reading this live because uh, by this point I was reading it live. I didn't see all the, the arms uh, whenever I was first reading. <laughs> so I don't know. It's neat. It's neat stuff. Mm-hmm. And then John disappears. That is both of our last lines for that section. Is John disappears. <laughs> intermission five, intermission five. They're now puppet people. You said, okay, but you said Hussey was still talking at that point. I thought Hussey had stopped talking at that point. Whatever. I see. Ref- I don't know. Huh? Uh, which part? The intermission five. In- intermission five. Yeah, because wasn't weren't they referencing like courting Vriska or something? I know that happens at some point. I might have gotten my intermissions mixed up because I know at one point 
Caliborn is talking to Hussey, uh, and Hussey stops responding. But I might have, I might that might be in a different, a different place. Mm-hmm. So we go to Spade Slick, who um, we're we're seeing for the first time after Lord English burst through and did a bunch of shit, you know, like murdered Hussey. Mm-hmm. So Spade Slick goes back up, finds Miss Paint. And like flirts with her a lot more, and uh, now has the 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 felt. He's now the the boss of the felt, and has Miss Paint replace Snowman, and she gets a cute dress. They go through the fifth wall, which goes into Scratch's house, which is on fire. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a very funny series of events. I I really like this section of like. I don't know. I just love how the the prose is because none of them like say lines of dialogue, but um, like there's no like quotes around anything. It's just like you say, I'm the leader, so I'm going to walk down the hallway first. And Crowbar is like, do you know where it is? And you're like, of course, I'm mm-hmm. the leader. I know where everything is. Starts to go down the hallway and you, uh, hey, uh, you should lead and tell us where to go on it, boss. I don't know. I love the whole mm-hmm. thing. It's just. Uh, but an- anyway, they get into um, an oven and and go out an escape pod into Paradox Space, and they uh, Spade Slick sees the Alpha Kid Skya up ahead and starts shooting off toward it. Ooh, let's see. And then and then we're back to John. Yeah, we're back to John. John starts appearing throughout all of Homestuck Canon. So this doesn't appear because he's all because the angles of What's happening in the canon is is different than the angles we see. And then he appears in Con Air. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. I forgot that that John exists in Con Air. Like, that's so, I don't know. Like, does he retroactively remember seeing himself in, in? no, I mean, he doesn't. But um, it is, uh, it is very funny. It is, he, he's going back into, into Homestuck canon and watching shit and just, like, making gross faces at stuff sometimes. <laughs> mm. Oh, see, you have it. It's intermission five, intermission six is when Hussey stops responding. Okay. Uh, John appears near Caliborn. They have a stare down because this is intermission five, intermission six. And now John appears in the sub intermission when before like that wasn't like part of the the relevant stuff that we were watching. Now John's in there and Mm -hmm. they have a stare down from page uh, 6196 to 6203. And it is, I think about this section all the time, where it's just Caliborn's face, John's face, zoom up on the face, zoom up on the face, and just like back and forth. It's, it's so funny to me. I love it so much. <laughs> then, um, it's not Biscuits. Who is it? Who is it that punches? I fucking forget all the felt name. I'm so sorry, guys. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the felt punches John out of the frame, which is very good. Mm-hmm. So Carcat, like, uh, we go back to Carcat and Dave, and Carcat like literally tells Dave to go fuck himself because he has you know the time power, so he literally can't do that. And if that's not, if that's not the <laughs> the start of so many like smut fix and fan art, it is. It's such a, <laughs> it's such a thing. I love it. Uh, Grimbark Jade looks uh, cool as hell. I love Grimbark Jade so much. That's just such a such a good look. <laughs> then uh, we we go to John, who is on um, Jake's planet, and it's it, it's just a montage of him being bored. He's just bored. He plays solitaire. He yeah. hangs his pants. He uh, watches <laughs> movies. He uh, he just hangs out. It's like, how do you know that that's where you need to be? I guess that's where, like, he's near where the gold boat is. But, like, he's just hanging out there instead of going and trying to find anyone. But then uh, uh, Grimbark Jade teleports everyone to where he is. And that's where it ends. That's it. Mm-hmm. And we see the kind of zoomed out map of the the chase going on between, I forgot the name again. Becknoir. Yeah. And PM. let's see, we have spades on the bottom right. Yeah, yeah. And then, gosh, who's the bottom? Uh, That's just a different Jack Noir. The bottom. There are, yeah, the there left? are three Jack Noirs in this picture. 
Because oh. Spade Slick is well. is the troll, uh, the troll session, Jack Noir. Beck Noir is the beta kid session, mm-hmm. Jack Noir, who got merged, who, you know, has the ring on, so has Beck's powers. And then in the, mm-hmm. the bottom left is the alpha kids, Jack Noir, who was in prison and got sent uh, oh, you know, yeah. locale. And is now little mm-hmm. cow possessed or something? I don't know. Uh, I forget. I, I forget <laughs> what people call him. It's like Lord Nor. I don't know. They call him something based on like Lord English and Jack mm-hmm. Nor. But uh, and then top right is Dirk, who got teleported out of the way, and so he's. They're all trying to get to Skaya, uh, where shit's happening. And thunder clouds. Oh, that's the meteor. <laughs> no, I mean like the when it, it zooms closer to the planet, it just looks like thunder clouds or something, or I don't, know. I don't know. White. I don't have that picture in front of me. Things. <laughs> what do you think about this section? It, I I don't know if it, I was enjoying the part when John was in Dream yeah. Bubbles, and I think that was easier to follow along with. But then I get really confused. That's fair. <laughs> there's so there's a lot going on. Um, thankfully, a lot of the important stuff gets repeated sometimes. Mm. shit is ramping up and i'm very excited for this next section we're either gonna get to where the gigapause starts either next time or the time after Mm -hmm. because there's a there's a lot that happens i'm i'm so excited what more is there even to tell in this story they've they've told everything they've told everything you're right all threads are wrapped up (laughs) at this point in time so true bestie (laughs) (laughs) but things are just going to get more exciting i'm i'm very excited for what's coming up i think it might take us two sessions to get to um the gigapause and then during the gigapause we're going to figure out what to do i'm very excited i like what's going on here Mm -hmm. (laughs) i love rimbark jade (laughs) yeah i'm always just interested in seeing where it continues going from here yeah well that's good what is the entire arc except it's not in the shape of an arc it's a it's a jeremy baramy a jeremy baramy what oh uh, that's from um how time works in the in the good place the tv show oh i've only seen the first season oh well you should watch more of it um I should. <laughs> but jeremy jeremy baramy is a shape <laughs> it's, it's a very non-linear shape I was thinking of wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff <laughs> from Doctor Who. Oh, I don't I don't watch that. Don't I'm not help. a nerd. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're not a nerd. Right. I have a I have a TARDIS tattoo, so mm-hmm. that's where I stand. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I I again I'm just very excited for what's coming up in like a lot, you know, not even just with uh what we're reading. But what is already going to have happened by the time this comes out in uh in in June? Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, you know, another plug for my newsletter, jaxiax.substack uh dot com, uh my Discord, my my Kofi. I uh, I I know I do all this at the end, but I know also that people tend to skip the end because I do when I listen to podcasts. So I have a Kofi where you get episodes one day early you get bonus content when i cut stuff that you know doesn't make it into an episode but is still like interesting enough or maybe not i don't know that's up for you to decide if it's interesting enough but i think it is so i put it in bonus stuff there's a lot of old bonus content um there's a big backlog of it i am trying to think of uh new bonus content to potentially do but yeah little 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 as one dollar a month you can sign up for that and it helps me pay for hosting and um, editing. So, so yeah. Yay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> until next time, one day I'll have a sign off again. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thank you to Dami for composing the theme song and editing the episode. You can find more of her work at soundcloud.com slash domino thief. Shout out to our fakest fan tier supporters, Danny the Spoon Lord and Tezrak. You can become a supporter and receive early episodes and bonus content for as little as $1 a month over at ko-fi.com slash or simply give a one-time tip. 
For information on and links to my other projects, head over to jacksyax.com. Thanks again for listening. 